As gun owners, we are all guilty of keeping a bucket list of firearms. Guns that you want more than others, and are willing to sell six months worth of feet pictures for on the internet. Thankfully, I didn't have to sell any pictures of my feet to get this, but it did put a pretty good dent in my kids' college fund. I have wanted a Nevesky Space Invader for the longest time, and when the opportunity came, I knew I had to jump on it, or I would be bitter at myself for quite a while. These guns are pretty elusive, and they are very hard to come by. If you have been on the hunt for one, you know what I'm talking about. With Nevesky's new MSRP of $3,400 for the pistol version, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, especially for a blowback 9mm AR pistol. The name Space Invader is cool enough by itself, but add in the genius marketing and the design of this PDW style firearm, it's hard not to want one. As of January, I heard Nevesky will no longer be making the pistols, only SBRs. So if you've been wanting one and can find one online for a close to decent price, I would say go for it while you can. For some clarity, this gun was not given to me or sponsored by anyone. I in fact did pay $3,200 for it, plus $200 in tax and shipping. This isn't going to be a high round count review or anything like that. This video is more of a close look at the Space Invader and is it worth the crazy price of admission. I'm simply here as a guide. A guide to show you cool shit and give you my two cents. Well, now four cents due to inflation. With all that aside, let's dive in. Nevesky Rifle Works is one of those companies at the very top of the industry. Founded by John Nevesky in 2001 and still kicking ass to this day. If you don't know the Nevesky backstory, I encourage you to do some digging on the internet and you'll find some pretty interesting videos and articles, if you're into that type of stuff. The Nevesky family was hit with a tragedy on January 4th of 2013, when John died in a car accident, leaving behind three children and his wife, who is now the owner of the company. The Nevesky legacy is still writing history. This is probably one of their most iconic firearms, next to the Ghetto Blaster. The Space Invader is a direct blowback 9mm with a QPDW brace that feeds off of the Colt Pattern magazines. So for all of you asking, no, it doesn't take Glock mags. Let's start at the front and work our way back. One of my favorite features is this integrated HK style 3 lug, machined right into the stainless steel barrel. I love 3 lug, easily the fastest way to attach a silencer. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings when it comes to the 3 lug attachment but it is by far my favorite. I ran a Silencer Co. Omega 9K on this, and it was a perfect match. The lockup of the 9K with the three lug adapter was solid, with minimal rotational play. Plus it also sounded great on the Space Invader. Running 147 grain subs through a setup like this will leave a smile on your face. The 8.5 inch stainless steel barrel is exceptionally accurate, even at a distance. Nevesky is known for their stainless steel barrels, so you wouldn't expect anything less than pure performance. Housing the barrel is Nevesky's 6 and a quarter inch NHR M-Lock free floating rail system. I really like this rail. My hand fits great around it, giving me more control over the firearm. It's a little different than your traditional M-Lock rail. You have your standard pick at the 12 o'clock, M-Lock at the 3 and 9, but at the 6 o'clock, you have another full section of Picatinny. The M-Lock is great for attaching your lights, lasers, whatever you want to throw on it. I'm running a Reptilia torch body with a surefire head and tail cap, which leads to a Unity mod button light. This setup works great for me. The Reptilia torch body allows the light to sit closer to the top of the rail, which keeps things nice and compact. This is my second torch body from Reptilia. If you're looking for a similar setup to this, I'd suggest you check them out. The mod button light is pretty sweet too. My only gripe is that it's a momentary switch and does not possess the capability of constant on. I can live with it though. I haven't had any issues with it so far, so fingers crossed, because I really like this setup. Let's move to the upper receiver. Sitting inside is a Nevesky marked and ramped 9mm bolt carrier group. Again, the kind of quality that you would expect from Nevesky. The bolt carrier glides in the upper receiver. Some direct blowbacks have kind of a gritty feeling when you charge the weapon, but this one is absolute butter. Machined into the upper receiver are proprietary grooves that allow the QPDW brace to collapse down. If you're familiar with the Honey Badger by Q, then you've seen this before. Very cool design. The upper receiver is nicely done. Hell, the whole pistol is a machine piece of art. When I say tolerances are tight, it's not an understatement. There is no play between the receivers, and the takedown pins need to be popped out with whatever tool you have laying around. 
Sitting on top is a Reptilia 1.94 inch mount with a Trigicon MRO. I like these higher mounts. It gives me more of a head up shooting style, which also allows me to see more of my surroundings while looking through the dot. The higher mounts are also handy if you run night vision. We'll do a separate video on that in the future. Included with the Space Invader is an Avesky Mark Geisley Airborne charging handle. It is ambi and works like a charm. The Airborne model has the smaller latches. I prefer the bigger ones, especially when wearing gloves, but I didn't have any issues manipulating the charging handle. Also included is a set of Magpul Pro and Bus sights. Now onto the lower receiver. The billet lower is machined from 7075 T6 with a hard coat type 3 anodizing and it's finished off with Cerakote ceramic coating in armor black. The lower receiver is ambi, ish. It has a bolt release on the right and left side, a standard mag release, and also the paddle magazine release. The MP5-ish paddle release is very cool to see on here. A good grip and rip always gets the job done. The lower also has an ambi 60 degree safety selector. The magazine well has a very nice flare, making those reloads very easy. You'll see the engraved Nevesky Iron Cross logo on the left and the Space Invader name that everybody goes crazy for on the right side along with other info. This lower accepts coal pattern magazines and ships with one Nevesky marked 32 round C products mag. Pretty sure that's Duramag, but don't quote me. A lot of people don't like the coal pattern mags because they say they have had reliability issues. I've owned a couple nines that take the coal pattern mag and personally, I haven't experienced that. I think a lot of it comes down to the magazine manufacturer. The plus side to these mags is that they cost around $25. You can't complain about that. I picked up a few extra of the Nevesky marked mags for $25 each from Gun Mag Warehouse. These magazines also utilize the last round hole open of the Space Invader, which worked every time for me. I'm not a big fan of firearms that don't have that last round hole open. The lower also has Nevesky Mark takedown pins. Like I said earlier about tight tolerances, you literally need something to push these things out. I tried and could not get them out by hand. The trigger is a Geisley Super MCX SSA. I love Geisley triggers, and this one is no exception. Minimal take up brings you to a distinct wall, then an extremely crisp break. The reset is nice and short, which allows you to get those fast follow up shots. I didn't get an exact weight on the trigger, but I can say that it's not too heavy while also being not too light. It's your happy medium, which you don't find much of in the gun world. I like seeing the Geisley products that Nevesky includes with the majority of their firearms. Let's talk about the Q-branded PDW brace. Very similar to the brace found on Q's Honey Badger, with one thing that makes all the difference. It has three positions, whereas the Honey Badger has only two. Too short and too fucking long. The brace on the Space Invader gives you that nice middle ground in the second position if the third is too long for you. I really wish Q would have done the same thing with the Badger. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love my Honey Badger, but that really gets me with only having the two positions. The brace on the Space Invader is way tighter than the one on my Badger. On the Badger, it has a ton of play. Side to side, up and down, all around. It doesn't make a huge difference to me, but for the price of the Badger, I would have expected more of a tight tolerance. Not only in the brace, but also the play between the upper and lower. The Space Invader is tight all the way around, giving it that extremely high quality fit and finish. With the compact nature of the cube brace, you are not able to run your standard tube and buffer setup. It utilizes its own proprietary system, just like the Honey Badger. People have been asking for a 9mm Honey Badger since its birth on the commercial market, and the Space Invader is probably the closest thing that you will ever get. Let's go over my final thoughts. Is the $3200 price of admission worth it? I think most people would say absolutely not, especially for a direct blowback 9mm. If you are an Avesky diehard and like collecting cool shit, then yes. For me, the Space Invader was one of those elusive unicorns and I had no hesitation to dish out the money for it. I have seen different levels of quality in my years and I can say that Nevesky is pretty far up the chain. You're not buying a $3200 dumpster fire, you're paying for that Nevesky quality and attention to detail along with some high-end extras like the Geisley and Q add-ons. The performance of the Space Invader was flawless. I have about 350 rounds suppressed through this and not one hiccup. Being a direct blowback, it does kick a little more than say something with a roller delay or a radial delay. Coming in at 5.4 pounds, it is kind of a pig, 
and that's no pun to Noveski's famous flaming pig. The little bit of extra weight does help minimize the felt recoil. At the end of the day, it's for you to decide if you can justify the purchase. Not me, not anyone else. Personally, I couldn't be happier with the Space Invader. It's everything I thought it would be, and then some. Guys, as always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.